In this video, we'll be going far deeper into our understanding of plasma, and we will be expounding the definition of it. As we stated in the previous video, plasma is a state of matter. Most of us only know about the three states of matter. We know that matter can exist in a solid state, a liquid state, or a gaseous state. Today, we're going to be talking about plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. Keeping in mind that ancient people said that there were seven states of matter. Humanity today is yet to discover the final three. But again, today we will be discussing the fourth state of matter, which was called radiant matter by Sir William Crookes, who was Nikola Tesla's mentor. As we get into the discussion of radiant matter, it will lead into how plasma relates to the human being, being that the human being exists in all states of matter at the same place and same time. And the human being is able to alternate between those different states. We know that the human is composed of solid, liquid, and gas, but we are also composed of plasma. And I like to view it as liquid light. So let's talk about radiant matter. Plasma was first identified in a Crookes tube and so described by Sir William Crookes in 1879, he called it quote unquote radiant matter. The nature of this cathode matter was subsequently identified by British physicist Sir J.J. Thompson in 1897. So before we go any further, let me go ahead and make a correction here. Plasma was not first identified by Sir William Crookes. The ancient ancestors knew about plasma, but of course in today's world, where there's a matrix being created on top of the old world, they want to give these modern day occultists all of the credit for rediscovering these ancient discoveries because the ancients knew about plasma. And as you can see here, what they're calling a crook's tube is right here carved on a wall in Egypt. The Egyptians knew about plasma. There was no way that they was building pyramids, lining them up with the stars, but they didn't discover the fourth state of matter. The Egyptians knew about all of the seven states of matter, and there were many ancient people who knew about all of the seven states. So you can see what they are calling a crook's tube right here carved in a wall in Egypt. So Crookes wasn't the first to discover plasma. He's the man who the New World Order accredited as the first to discover it. And you got to keep in mind that Sir William Crookes was in all type of secret societies in which we'll discuss later. The reason they put him on a pedestal is because these people are trying to hide the ether. And Sir William Crookes coined the word electron over the term ether wave which is the true term. And you can see that one of the instruments used in a crook's tube just so happened to be the symbol of the Jesuit cross. Sir William Crookes was a Jesuit. The powers that be are hiding the secrets of free energy, which lies in the study of the ether, which is plasma. Plasma matter is ethereal matter. So it's important for me to plug this in real quick before we read any further, because we're gonna read some more information about Sir William Crookes and all of that. Let's continue. So again, radiant matter was the term used to describe what British physicist William Crookes stated was a fourth state of matter. And during this time, what they called the atom was thought to be a small solid ball, indivisible and without motion. Now, let me stop right there and let me point out something very important before we move further. All of the conceptions of the cosmos or the universe that we've seen throughout the generations are based upon man studying microcosm. Space is not real. And the conception that we get of the early solar system with a motionless sun is basically plagiarization of ancient cosmology. All there is is the ether and the symbol that the ancient used to express the ether became the modern day symbol that we call an atom, 
which was also the symbol that they turned into the first solar system with the sun motionless in the middle. So we read here that early Western scientists thought that the atom was a small ball, indivisible and without motion. Now, if you look at the early solar system, that's exactly what it is. It's the sun motionless with all of the planets going around it like they show you for the atom symbol. See, they're just waking up, but the ancients already knew what they just discovering. If you look at the new solar system model that they give you with the sun in motion, it's because they are starting to reverse engineer ancient science and ancient concepts. Because if you look at the electromagnetic energy field, the sun is just an interpretation of the center. The sun is the sand or the center, the center. This is why the sun was at the center of their cosmos, but the sun is not at the center of the universe. The North Pole is, and the North Pole is actually zero degrees, the center of magnetism, because the earth is an electromagnetic energy field. So the North Pole is constantly turning so that the sun and moon can be stirred, so that the atmosphere can be stirred. In other words, the North Pole is stirring the ether and an element sits within the ether. So our reality is a smoothie and if the stirring stops, then according to the laws of density, all of the different elements that's creating reality will separate into their own layers and we will cease to exist. Reality will dissipate. It will separate from itself. So the North Pole was very important to the ancients before they turned it into Santa Claus and the Egyptian god Shu, which is Yahshua. We'll be talking about that in the future. But you need to understand how deep the deception is. The North Pole is a perpetual motion device. The ancients knew that, but the early Europeans didn't. And they had the North Pole symbolized as the sun in the middle of their solar system, and it didn't have motion. If you look at this electromagnetic torus field, the center of this torus field is in motion, constantly churning the Milky Sea, which is the ethereal sea. And you can see it looks like a fish. This became personified as Jesus fish, the Jesus fish. And this is why Jesus was on Mount Calvary, which is the Vedic Mount Maru. He was in between the two thieves, which is the sun and moon. We'll talk about that in a future video, but let's get back on track. Sir William Crook's theories were confirmed by the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th when it was discovered that what Crooks observed was a flow of electrons in a medium containing plasma, the fourth state of matter. Now, before we read any more, I just want you to see how this relates to human blood, because you can look at the cells in our veins as a flow of electrons inside of a medium that they call plasma. Light is plasma. So that's why I call the plasma in our veins liquid light. The lightning in the sky is a plasma. The stuff in your veins is similar to lightning. And if you look at the human veins, it resembles lightning. The blood inside of your veins is blue, the same color of the lightning strikes. So let's talk about this radiant matter a little bit more. You see the blood flows through the body just as electricity flows through an electronic device. The blood is like the electricity that is circulating through the body, keeping us alive. And once this electricity is no longer circulating, the body cannot function. In this sense, it's the same as a robot which runs off electricity. And it makes sense why the ancients call our reality an electric universe. Everything is electric. You want to know the secret that the late great Dr. Sebi knew? What allow him to heal the body is that everything can be healed on an electric level because we live in an electric universe and the blood is electric. It can be shocked. And when you find a way to shock it without killing the human, you'll kill all the diseases within it. And that's what Dr. Sebi knew. This is how the ancients was healing themselves. 
because they understood that the universe was electric. The blood was electric. Just like if you shock a swimming pool and people in it, they'll die. You can do the blood the same way. And that's why Dr. Sebi called his medicine electric cell food, electric cell food. Dr. Sebi's treatment basically electrified the blood or shocked the blood, killing all of the diseases within it. So what they're calling cells are really sparks of electricity. And as each of these sparks emit their light, since the light is a material, they are all connected. They all flow in proximity and each of them are radiating their own light. So the cells are basically sparks of light and the radiance, the aura from those sparks is what we're calling the plasma or the radiant matter. So if you think of a lightning strike, one single strike is composed of a series of sparks. When lightning strikes, one single lightning strike is composed of many different explosions and just like connect the dots, each explosion forms a vein like line. So if you look at lightning strikes, you will see that within a strike, there may be centers where there's huge concentrations of plasma or balls of light. And this is where the explosion took place. And from one big explosion may come several smaller explosions and they're all connecting the dots forming what we call lightning strikes. It's not like it's one single strike. It's a series of explosions that connect the dot and this happened within milliseconds. This is the nature of plasma. And to study lightning strikes is to study this radiant matter. We see that lightning strikes follow a path of least resistance just like the human vein system. So today's scientists also tell us that 99.9% .9 of all the matter in the universe is plasma. So based upon that statement, we can see again why the ancients said our universe is electric. And based upon that statement, we can see why the states of matter that we're calling solid, liquid, and gas are created and recreated through this fourth state of matter called plasma. So you can look at plasma as this state of matter in between what we call the physical reality and the ethereal reality. It then has one foot in our physical reality and one foot into the spiritual or ethereal reality. So plasma is a very special type of material for that reason. It's a transportive and transformative material. So if there are seven states of matter, plasma split those seven states in the middle, just like the heart chakra splits the seven chakras. And it's basically a threshold where energy transforms from one thing to another. That's why it's 50-50. It's physical material, but it also is non-physical material. It is the matter that connects our physical world with the non-physical world. So think about that because electricity is plasma and we power our world with electricity and blood is basically flowing electricity. Everything is powered with electricity. Everything is powered with electricity and electricity equals power. So plasma equals power power which cannot be created or destroyed only generated the power that powers our world the electricity that we're pulling where are we pulling it from from the ether because 99.9% .9 of our reality is made out of electricity which makes me ask a question why are we paying for power if it's this abundant why are we being told that it's an energy crisis? Why are we talking about sustainability when literally energy is a byproduct of nature? We could have been arrived at the form of technology where power or energy is free. 
when you understand that movement is energy, we could live in a world where the clothes you wear could translate your movement into energy and store it in a generator at your house and you can power your house just by exercising. By the 1870s, the nature of electricity was unknown and many experiments were done to determine its nature. Tubes with the low vacuum possessing two metal electrodes were commonly employed for this purpose. When a high voltage was applied between the electrodes, a glow filling the tubes was observed. This glow was said to be the effect of quote unquote cathode rays. William Crookes was able to generate a higher vacuum in tubes known as Crook tubes and found out that as he pumped more air out of the tubes, they became totally dark except for the anode end where the glass of the tube itself began to glow. This showed that the cathode rays traveled in straight lines from the cathode negative end to the anode positive, causing fluorescence in objects upon which they impacted and producing great heat. This is very amazing, brothers and sisters, because at the bottom of the ocean, you have animals that are fluorescent, producing their own plasma type of light and generating their own heat. So this sounds very similar to what's going on in the very depths of the ocean. If the sky is the negative and the ground is the positive, if traveling upwards mean going to the negative end and traveling down, we're traveling into the positive end of the earth. This would explain why animals in the depths of the sea has this plasma type of glow and produce their own heat. This is very interesting because our earth is similar to a cathode ray. And remember that the sky is a plasma. So during the time of Crookes, there were only two theories to explain the nature of the cathodic rays. Heinrich Hertz and others believed they were quote unquote ether waves, while Crookes insisted they were formed by particles. He maintained they were a fourth state of matter where atoms were electrically charged. The debate was resolved in 1897 when Sir J.J. Thompson established the particle nature of the rays. However, he discovered they were not atoms, but a new particle. And it was said to be the first subatomic particle to be discovered, which they named the electron. Thus, Thompson proved that the cathode rays are streams of electrons. Now, the first argument by Heinrich Hertz and others that these were ether waves was actually correct. Today, what we're finding out is that what they're calling electrons would be better defined as ether waves. So one thing about Sir William Crookes I want to point out before we move on is that he was a member of the Theosophic Society and many more societies and he was closely connected to Helena Blavatsky. And we'll get into some of these occult connections that he had because the reason we wouldn't talk much about plasma, we was taught about solid liquid gas and they stopped us after that. They didn't take us to the fourth state of matter. It's because plasma is the secret of the Jesuits. And I'm gonna show you that the Jesuit cross is actually a part of the cathode ray. As you can see here, the Jesuit cross is an instrument that plays a role in the cathode ray. And we'll be talking about that role in a minute. So what we're going into now is deep occult secrets. And what you need to understand is that these people in power hid the ether. So they did not want to refer to the plasma as an ether wave, which it really is an ether wave. Remember that Sir William Crookes was part of the Illuminati. And that's why he was put at the forefront as the face of plasma, because he continued the mainstream traditional concept of a particle universe, a compartmentalized universe. Basically that electricity is moving through space versus space itself being the ether or the plasma 
and electricity is moving through plasma, which we see happens in nature. So our cells are like electrons moving through a plasma. See, and when you look at space, for example, we talk about as above, so below. When you look at space, space is supposed to be like a plasma. That's why they tell you 99.9% .9 of the universe is plasma, but they call it dark matter because it's still a cult right now. It's still something that they're studying in secret. The truth is that there is no space. Now they tell you all of the planets and galaxies and all that are moving through space, but we're finding out that the nature of the sky and the universe, we're finding out that the sky is a plasma. So since the ancients defined plasma as the matter that fills all space, plasma cannot coexist within space. Plasma actually debunks space. And this is because plasma is a space filler. Plasma is synonymous with ether. The fourth state of matter is the ethereal state. One of the most amazing things about atoms is that they are mainly empty space. If an atom were as wide as your arm span, then the electrons would all be whizzing about inside the volume enclosed by your fingertips. Meanwhile, the nucleus would be sitting in the center, and its diameter would be smaller than the width of a single human hair. So all of the atoms that make up you and me and all the seemingly solid things in the universe are mostly empty space. Now this is incredible, but what is even more mind-boggling is that empty space is not truly empty. I know because I've seen it. This is a simulation by Professor Derek Lineweber at the University of Adelaide. It was made using a supercomputer to crunch the calculations of quantum chromodynamics. What we're looking at here is the energy density of uh, the gluon field fluctuations. Where the little red spots come out, the energy density is very high and it fades down through the colors. And the lowest energy field fluctuations are not rendering in this animation so that we can actually see into it. And what we see is a bubbling soup of quantum field fluctuations that come and go incredibly quickly. The frame rate of this simulation is one million billion billion frames per second. Now that is truly high speed. The dimensions of this box are absolutely tiny. They are millionths of a billionth of a meter, roughly enough space to stick two protons. But there are no protons here. This is a simulation of the vacuum on its own, what we'd normally think of as empty space. Empty space is actually full of these quark gluon field fluctuations. And on average, um, it is possible to annihilate a quark from empty space because it's, it's not empty. Um, that just sounds like the most ridiculous idea that you, you're meant to have empty space and yet you yeah. can go and get rid of stuff from it. That's right. So it is an empty. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Everybody in the world die Please Lord give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place All this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit. Now the ether was defined as the state of matter, like I said, that fills all space. So space and the ether can't coexist because with the presence of the ether being a space filler, there would be no space. So this is why space is plasma. This is why scientists is telling you 99.9% .9 of space is dark matter or plasma. So like I was saying earlier, most of man's conceptions of the universe comes from his study of the microverse. And they tell you that space is basically a plasma and you have all of these planets and solar systems moving through it. And these planets and solar systems and all of that 
are like the cells that are selling through this plasma sea that they're calling space. So think about this. Can it really be space if it's plasma? It can't be nothing if it's something, people. But they're trying to give you the truth while still hiding the truth. And the truth is that the ether exists and that space is fake. When you see how the cells sail through the body's plasma river system that we call veins, then you can see what they're giving you for space programming. It's just as above, so below them studying the micro and ancient conceptions. So one of plasma's role in the blood is to act as a transporter. And if you look at the heliocentric space programming, they tell you space is plasma and the planets or galaxies are traveling through it or being transported through it just as the cells and everything in the blood are being transported through plasma. So again, one of plasma's role as blood is to transport cells and other nutrients throughout the body. And its relation to blood is the same as radio waves relation to sound. You see, because sound can be transported through radio waves and cells can be transported through radiant matter or plasma. So this is why Tesla's mentor, Sir William Crooks, called it radiant matter. And I don't think Tesla was connected with the Illuminati like his mentor. If he was, he sure in the hell turned on him because his plans was to give the world all of these secrets. Tesla recognized the ether, unlike his mentor, Mr. Crooks. And it was because Tesla, later in his life, developed a relationship with the shamans who also possessed this knowledge in one of its traditional and purest forms. So let's talk a little bit about plasma being the ethereal matter, because what you got to realize about the word ether is that the word ether is the word either. The yin yang was a symbol used to express the ether, meaning that Reality exists in a dual state and transitioning between these different states that compose reality is also called traveling through the ethers or the netters, what the Egyptians call the netters were the ethers. And in a future video, I will do an entire presentation about the netters or the seven sky nets, the seven heavens or seven ethers. The ancestors said that there are seven realities. We are in one of those realities now. And the other six are called the ethereal realms. When you transition from one realm to the other one, whichever realm you in becomes your reality. But your reality is not all there is. Your reality is simply the world that you realize with your senses but there's more to realize. So there's something beyond reality called actuality or ether reality. So the ethereal realms are the realms that exist beyond this realm, share the same space with this realm, but you can only perceive reality in degrees. So wherever point you find yourself at or wherever you call reality, it's just the level of realization you are at the moment but they are yet higher states of realization. When you think about the four states of matter being solid, liquid, gas, and plasma or ether, ether is the final stage of all physical matter. And after this stage of what we call physicality, ether is a transcendental type of matter where after matter crosses this threshold, it start to transform into three other higher states of matter. And these three higher states are the non-dense expression of what the matter was. And these three higher states of matter are the final three netters that the matter transitions through before becoming back materialized as a solid. So all of the heavy elements in our cosmos are located in the bottom of the cosmos, in the ground, the lower you go, the more dense things get. The higher you go, 
the less dense things get. So a snowflake will drop to the ground because it exists as solid ice. But when the ice melt and become a liquid, the liquid evaporates and the snowflake ascends back up into the sky and it does the process all over again. All matter transitions this way. But it's not just that the snowflake is going from solid liquid to gas. It's going through a transcendental state of matter where it vanishes when it becomes ethereal matter and moves on into yet three more higher states would be the light frequency of that matter. It's breaking down into the most purest thing that it is, the lightest thing that it is. The higher it ascends, the lighter it gets. And once it reached that final netta, the seventh one, it then repeats the same process in reverse. So we're talking explosion, implosion, contraction, expansion. This is like breathing. And as it repeats that process in reverse, it goes back from its highest state all the way back down to its most dense state. So it go from these highest states back to a gas to liquid, then the liquid solidifies back to a snowflake. Then it hit the ground again and repeat the process again in reverse. And it go from being a solid snowflake back to liquid into a gas. It goes up again to the highest states. Then it repeat the process again in reverse. And this is just ping pong, ping pong, yin yang, yin yang. It rematerializes back into what it was as a solid. But this time it's enhanced and renewed. So this is how matter renews itself. And all solid matter has to cross that fourth threshold and become ethereal matter and break down into those final three states before rematerializing. So you can look at the seven states of matter like the seven chakras of the human. These are the seven states we exist in. And the heaviest states, the most dense states, are located at the bottom in red. Root chakra, we moving on up. When we pass that heart chakra, which is a vortex, a threshold, that would be the ethereal chakra. That's where you're leaving the heavy chakras and you're now going into the light chakras. And it's three light chakras existing above the heart. See, the heart is neither heavy nor light. It's neutral. It's a threshold where you're transitioning from heavy to light. So the first three states of matter are the most dense states. And after that third state being gas, matter turns into a transcendental form of itself called transcendental matter or ethereal matter, which is the fourth state, the doorway state before matter becomes what we call light matter. And it's three states of light matter. And after that final state of light matter, is resurrection or remanifestation or rematerialization, reincarnation. But the energy is never the same as it cycles through the states. It's transition through each state. So as it resolidify, it's a renewed version of what it was before. And energy will only keep going through these different states over and over because it can't cease to exist. It can only transition and transform itself into enhanced versions of itself. Again, so the word ether is the word either. And the ancestors said there are seven ethers or ethers, ethereal realms, either realms, and you can exist in either one or the other. The word other is the word ether or aether. Other is ether. So there are other realms or ether realms. You can exist in either of these realms. You can only perceive a fragment of reality at one given time based upon your level of realization. That's what reality you find yourself in. But there are other things to realize beyond your level of understanding. So the worlds that exist beyond your level of realization are the ether worlds or the other worlds of existence. Ether just mean either or other. And there are other realms out there or ethereal realms. You can exist in either one or the other. 
So when the ancestors said that there was seven ethers, they wasn't speaking of the word seven for its numerical value. The word seven just means several, which is infinity, meaning there are infinite amount of ethers. And the higher you go, the more heavenly the reality is. I and mean, that's called moving up the stairway to heaven. So remember, they only conceived seven ethers because they wasn't going to sit there and draw out an eternal cosmos. There are some models where you can see more heavens, 10 heavens, but they just stopped at seven. And we all knew that there were many beyond the number seven. The number seven just means several. The number seven just means severed because each of the worlds are severed. They're separated. So the seventh month was called septos. And you see the root word sept for separated. A seven represents a step on a stairway and each step is a degree or a seven. So this is also why the word sept is the word step as well, because a step represents a separation or a degree or a netter. Each step is separated from the next one. So septos was the last month where the month restarted and this was a separating point. So remember that seven just means severed. The ethers are severed or layered and there are several of them. So I can't emphasize that enough that the word ether is the word either and the word other. So reality can be perceived on several states of existence and matter can manifest itself in several states. The different realms that exist beyond this realm are the different ways nature constructs reality in those different states. So this reality exists in many different forms, starting from the most dense forms to the least dense forms. And it's separated by degrees or ethers. And you can perceive reality in either of these layers, depending on your level of realization, determines which reality you will spawn into. So that's enough of that. Let's talk some more about Sir William Crook's secret society ties and how the powers of today's world was able to maintain their hiding of the ether in the higher states of matter. So again, Sir William Crooks had a relationship with Helena Blavatsky, and she maintained that Crooks' discovery of quote-unquote radiant matter proved that there exists more refined states of matter than the quote-unquote solid atoms of her time. She argued that electricity was not an immaterial force, but a form of matter which does not have the properties assigned to quote-unquote dense matter. Now, people, what we call electricity is supposed to be composed of electrons, but what we got to realize is that electrons and solid atoms and all of that crap is crazy. What we got to realize is that we live in an electric universe, and the word universe means one thing. All of it is connected and plug, it's plugged into itself. Everything is connected. So it's not made of individual particles called electrons and little solid atoms. That's idiotic. Our infinite universe is one single thing and it's composed of many sparks. You're one of them and it's all connected. So what we're saying is that the physical reality sits within a web of electrical energy and you can't create this electrical energy or destroy it. You can generate it by creating a generating device that would allow you to pull it from the ether and harness it as electricity to power the world. So where do the power on earth come from? All that exists is power or energy or what the ancestors call God. And by you becoming enlightened, you can literally power yourself with the power of the universe or the God force, the ethereal force. And that's exactly what they're doing. Energy can't be created or destroyed. So the electrical grid that maintains the world 
is created by generating energy, not creating it. Energy is not manufactured. Electricity or energy is simply ran like water. Electricity runs. If you go to a running river and you build a tunneling device to siphon the water from the river into your village, you didn't create the water. You created a device that allowed you to generate water in your area. So an energy generator doesn't create energy. It pulls it from the ether. It siphons it from the ether. Energy is all around us. We exist in a sea of energy and you can generate that energy with devices. This is why energy should be free because it's the most abundant thing in the cosmos is 99.9% .9 of the cosmos and yet we slave and work for it. So when you go in your kitchen and turn on a kitchen sink, you don't create water. You're running the water, but you're not creating it. This is the same way electricity work. You can't create energy. You can build a device that would allow you to turn it on and off and generate it and run it. And you can run your electrical systems just like you run water. In ancient day, energy generating systems were very common and generate energy was common knowledge before the government monopolized the knowledge and made it a cult. Now everybody pay for energy when really generating energy was one of the most easiest things to do in the ancient world. And people like Tesla and many others wanted to bring that energy revolution back to life. Once again, where it's common knowledge, children can build energy generating devices Energy is all around us and how to generate it used to be common knowledge. In the previous video, we talked about plasma being the placing material or the placing matter. And we talked about how it gets its name plasma or plasma. And earlier I spoke on how plasma or the ether cannot coexist with space for reasons that we mentioned earlier. And the reason is because plasma or placing matter, placement matter, is the matter that fills all places or spaces. Therefore, space or emptiness cannot coexist with ether or plasma. So the presence of this placing matter can be detected in our reality as the law of density. So it is plasma, this fourth state of matter, that is responsible for placing all of the other states in their positions. So plasma is directly related to the law of density and without plasma, the law of density wouldn't exist. It's the plasma or the medium that allow all these other states of matter to organize themselves within it in their positions based upon their own density. So without plasma, there would be no fluid that would allow those other states of matter to organize themselves freely and move around fluidly to their positions. In other words, movement is only possible through a medium and all states of matter move through the fourth state, which is called plasma or the placing state. Placing matter or plasma it's the state of matter that allows us to move from place to place. It allows the other states of matter to have a medium to move through. So all matter moves through the matter that is responsible for placing the other states of matter in their respective positions. So plasma is the sea by which all matter move through. And once matter moves from one place to another, the place is automatically filled with plasma or ether. All that exists is the ether and we move within it. So there is no space because this ethereal matter fills all spaces and allows for matter to be fluid. So plasma is basically the state of matter that is after gas. And this state of matter acts as a placeholder for the original. This state of matter is the vibrational frequency, which is not visible, but holds the place of the original visible thing. 
Once this invisible frequency comes in contact with the natural elements, it is manifested in its visible form. Plasma literally acts as the replacing matter or the state matter assumes when it renews itself or replaces itself within the natural elements.